Hello and welcome to B2B International Insights Podcast. My name is Beata Miklos. I'm Research Director at B2B International in Germany, and I will be the host for today's episode. I'm joined by my colleague, Niklas Heitland, who is Senior Research Executive in Dusseldorf. How are you, Niklas? I'm very good. I hope the weather is better for you in Munich today, but <laughs> <laughs> thanks for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to today's uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Yes, the weather is really nice today and thank you for invite uh, for accepting uh, the invite. I'm super excited about today's topic because we will be um, discussing our favorite frameworks for creating um, winning value propositions. And I think the topic of value and um, the value in itself should be really the heart of uh, every business. Um, whether it is about the value for our customers, um, about creating the value for society, our employees or potential employees. I think this always should be the ultimate goal for every company. Uh, very often we speak about the growth, about looking for new growth opportunities, and I think it's super important. However, if we do not create the true value um, for customers and further stakeholders, um, I think the business will not grow. And if we really focus on that, uh, the growth will follow naturally anyway. And um, as mentioned, today we will be talking about uh, our frame favorite um, frameworks. Um, and you've been with the business now for almost three years. And um, what do you think generally about using frameworks in research, uh, in analysis? Um, what is the role for you for of frameworks? Yeah, so um, I imagine frameworks always like a, like a desert in, in a restaurant. So you've gone through all the main course, which is, of course, our uh, whole analysis, and it's packed with uh, numbers, data, and, and, and insights. Um, but the goal is to finish um, kind of with a, with, a, with a bang, I would say, right? Like with a restaurant, you will remember the desert in the end. When, when there's, there's a good ending, you remember it even more and in a good light. So that's where frameworks uh, come um, in for me for good research. So they take all this prior uh, analysis, um, which can be, of course, sometimes overwhelming, um, mm -hmm. especially for other for other departments which have not so much to do with um, with market research or they're not so much into the project. And these frameworks um, wrap wraps this whole data up uh, in a way that's easy to um, to digest so ideally you should be able to glance at the framework and then you can um, see in the moment what the results are um, saying about your uh, research what are the key themes and um, also a solid framework should be uh, accessible to everyone like yeah. i said before even those who are not deeply involved in market research so you can um, you can share it across the whole to hold a uh, across the whole company and everyone will understand the main points. That's why I think frameworks are really important, uh, a really important part of, of a good research and um, it's, it's a good way to end the report and summarize everything again um, to, to have a good understanding about it. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more and I um, like that you mentioned that it is used not only by market research specialists or marketing specialists, it can be really used by anyone at the company and frameworks are great, um, as you just mentioned, to summarize the data, to, to show the most important findings in an understandable way, but also um, they are a great way of um, gathering the ideas and of organizing the insights that we already have for brainstorming within the organization. And they can be used both at the end of the process, as you just said. Um, but I will also say they can be even used in the beginning when you want to organize the faults and think what information do you still need to make solid decisions. So I think frameworks, yeah, as mentioned, they can be used throughout the a market research process, strategic process, as you say, basically used by anyone um, with whatever role at the organization. 
but uh, let's now dive straight into our favorite frameworks. So what is your favorite uh, framework for creating winning value propositions? Yeah, um, thanks for uh, asking. My favorite uh, framework is the uh, value proposition canvas. Um, and think of it uh, kind of as the heart of your uh, business uh, model. It's all about the um, it's all about the promise you make to your customers, the unique value or benefit uh, they get from your services. For example, for our from uh, our market research, it's not uh, just about what you what you sell in the end, but uh, why it actually matters matters to them. Mm -hmm. So, creating a strong um, value proposition is is actually kind of a key for your marketing, pricing, and, and overall success. Um, there's this great tool called the Value Proposition uh, Canvas. Um, that can help you nail this down. And it's split into two parts. At one side, uh, you look at your customers and what they need. And on the other side, you focus on how your services, for example, our market research meet those needs. And when these two sides match up, we've got something like, a, um, it's called a problem solution fit. And that's the spot where we want to be, um, ideally to uh, with our services we offer. So if we go more into detail on the right side, like I say, we have um, the customer segment. Um, first of all, you basically want to create a separate canvas, um, a model for each customer group or each persona. Um, you do this because then you can really um, handle what part of your offering will click with each audience because audience are differences and you need to um, separate a little bit what kind of services will resonate more with this or this or this uh, audience. Mm -hmm. um, so on the right side, you will have the, the customer jobs um, and these are the tasks that your customer needs to accomplish. And this isn't uh, already about your product yet. It's all about just addressing the needs and the goals of this chosen customer segment. So um, when we talk about this jobs, uh, the customer have, we're listening to uh, everything, basically what, what matters to the customer. It does not just include like, like typical functional aspects, but also social and emotional aspects. Um, so you will ask yourself like, what tasks and jobs does the customer need to accomplish? What strategy, strategies does the customer use to solve these tasks? Um, and when and in what context does the customer need to complete this task? And example in the market research would be a startup company wants to uh, understand the market potential for their new uh, app or product. And their jobs is then basically to uh, identify target demographics, um, data, which will be a functional job, validating their business concepts, like an emotional jobs um, and presenting data-driven insights to potential investors would, uh, would be a social mm -hmm. jobs. Of course, they will have, they will face some pains there. Um, it's, these are things which will cause frustration they encounter while they try to, to complete this task, um, basically to, to get the job done. Um, and again, in, in, an example would be for the startup company, um, it, it's difficult to collect an accurate and comprehensive uh, data, like mm -hmm. doing the market research all on your own alone, uh, which is which is difficult. You will uh, meet some barrier there. Um, you will have... I, yeah, for, for example, sorry to, to interrupt, yeah. they will get to st uh, spend a lot of time. This should be also the pain or the exactly. investor will not, I don't know, trust the data or understand, as you just said. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, then they will have some fears about if their product will need their markets um, mm -hmm. and the challenge of convincing uh, investors. Mm -hmm. These are pains which will yeah. occur on the, on the customer side. And then we can still go on the side into gains. So let's... Mm -hmm. uh, into benefits for the customer experience. And these are advantages they gain from completing exactly this task or their task. And it's still not about the, the product yet, but rather about this, this satisfaction feeling the customer has when they uh, successfully accomplish, uh, accomplish the goal. Um, and in, as, as a part of this framework, you try to focus on identifying these positive outcomes 
for for your customer yeah. and how they would feel if they mm -hmm. would um, it would accomplish this um and to stick to this example so when this uh, company now successfully hires a market research company and they can gain the detailed and reliable data get confidence in their product uh, and um, can present this data even to investors for example they will get a lot of gains uh, on the customer side to um, to gain trust and everything in their product and they will feel a, a mm -hmm. satisfaction feeling um, yeah on this thing. So always remember customers don't buy products or services. Um, we hire them to do the job for, for us. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. And final proposition canvas is also one of my favorite frameworks. And you mentioned different customer groups, how important it is also to co consider the um, the needs, expectation, pace, and and uh, gains of these different customer segments. Mm -hmm. And I also think within the customer groups, even within one company, there is m more than one decision maker or more than one person involved. So I think it's, especially in the B2B space, it's always um, important to think that these decisions are often more complex. They are uh, very often group decisions and for example in the industrial company the um, production manager will think about for example in context of machinery where his gains will be the smooth smoothly running production on the other hand side the person responsible for sustainability will think um, about having uh, you know the best possible sustainability index so we'll look um, if the supplier can help to achieve these goals. On the other hand side, we have purchaser um, who maybe thinks more about savings. So I think it's also very important to think about different tasks of different people within the organization. But definitely the exactly. value proposition canvas is super, um, very, very handy and useful tool for cre creating the value proposition. Exactly completely right it's it's really important to to always keep and keep, keep an eye on this this point you you just mentioned um to continue the um the, the framework we have then on the on the left side basically how our services uh, mm -hmm. can meet uh, can meet those needs and um we have as uh, as a market research company then some pain relief us so it's our market research services um which will of course relieve the the pain for collecting the data and um we can do this for the customer to make the whole process uh, smooth uh, smooth giving accurate and uh, insights uh, mm -hmm. be uh, cost efficient and use advanced data tools and analytics to make sure our reports are spot on and easy to to understand again it's not about the, the customer will will hire us not just about the products but it's just to get the self accomplishment that they can yeah. have actional and, uh, and and good, good insights. insights so they will that's, that's why they will hire they us to do to this and um, then we will of course give them some gain creators um mm. just cause will be the the data most of it um Ana analytics predictive uh, modeling etc uh, depends on what what the what the customer uh, would like um, market opportunities you also go further with dashboards visualize everything in a nice nice way uh, go beyond the, the frameworks also the uh, the report itself visualize it in a in a good way um, and just use our skills and knowledge to um, to get good insights for the for the company just some uh, examples we could do is uh, of course the market analyst reports uh, we can do um, personalized consultation services we can do also workshop and uh, training uh, sessions later so everything we can we can think of basically to um, to relieve the pain of the customer to collect the data and uh, give them these gain creators and make him um, make him satisfied and um, we will we stand out what is our value um, 
above the product itself. And as I said, the goal is to get the perfect problem so the solution fit. So when uh, our value proposition uh, effectively addresses the, the customer needs for good market research and we can align both this left side, our side and the right side uh, of the customer jobs, uh, we can achieve this perfect problem solution fits. And this means our product will be perfectly tailored to the customer's jobs and uh, we will provide basically the perfect uh, headache pills or medicine for their, for their pain they have in the beginning for the good uh, market research and we can um, uh, create enthusiasm and uh, high satisfaction within the customers which of course you can think will lead to um, other things they will return to us um, if they have another project uh, they will remember us um, etc which will um, stand out you will just stand out as a company as you can see it that's why I think this this uh, framework is so is so important because it it really nails down what is important, what does the customer need, what we can provide, and in the end, it um, if you do it in a in a in a right way, it can just bring uh, advantages for us yeah. and let us stand out uh, as a company. And I think it can be used really uh, by any kind of business. You just mentioned the example of market research industry, but definitely creating uh, uh, using the event canvas proposition framework is possible for any business, whether you exactly. produce machinery, whether you uh, provide coloring shampoos to hairdresser, uh, you know, softwares, whatever, where okay. they concentrate on customers on, on, as you said, their jobs, what are their pains, their goals in developing your proposition i think you have big chances of being um very successful on the market um, however i think with this framework there's one aspect um or, or two aspects that are not covered and they can be actually covered by another framework which is also one of my favorite frameworks and um, this is the free circle framework and um, in the free uh, circle framework we focus not only on customer needs, um, but also on the strength and offering of our competitors and our own offering and our strength. And um, the ideas and uh, findings we summarize in these three circles. And uh, there are areas that, or there are aspects actually and ideas that are common for all three circles. So aspects that customer need and expect, aspects in which competitors are also good and they offer and they deliver on this aspect. And also we deliver these aspects, these features of the solution. And very often these are some hygienic aspects which just need to be delivered to be successful on the market. And that's okay. That's normal that some areas are common for all the competitors and player actives on the market. There are also aspects uh, that are important for customers and only some competitors can deliver. And we are, uh, at least at the moment, not able to deliver them. There are also aspects um, which we as a company are able to deliver and customer really need these aspects. But other companies cannot do this um, or cannot deliver these features. Mm -hmm. And um, these aspects are in the end our true differentiators. So something that, that is market relevant and something that truly differs us from competitors. And it is very important to further develop these aspects, to communicate them, um, to talk about them in marketing. And also when we develop a value proposition, it is also important to think that we have some differentiators because um, in delivering a product or a solution that already exists on the market and others can also deliver doesn't bring a true value for customers, in my opinion. So I think, um, yeah, using this framework is also very helpful for creating uh, winning value propositions. And as mentioned, adds 
this aspect of market relevance and the aspect of competition. Um, and um, in the end, it helps companies to be successful with their value proposition on the market. Exactly. And I also think it's it's a good framework for, for these differentiators you mentioned and um, to fight them out is, is, is really important, especially in, in, in nowadays where you always are overwhelmed by uh, so much services yeah. and everything. So it, it it's, has become more important than uh, than ever to, to get some uh, differentiators and to find out the most important one. Um, I think this framework can be can be a good way way to do this. I also think this is this is a really important one. Every uh, every company should should at least have a look at and um, maybe bring it inside their strategy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you mentioned the aspects that uh, need to be uh, um, delivered by uh, anyone, which actually brings me to um, another framework that I would like to uh, uh, use in projects uh, on customer value proposition. And it's the uh, so-called uh, Kano model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's we also use it in, in, in market research to prioritize uh, product features based on the on the customer satisfaction. Um, and it helps business, businesses really good to understand which features will uh, actually delight customers and uh, which are basically just expected in a, in a, yeah. in a normal way. Um, so I like this framework very much because it, it nails down like basic features must have. So these are essential, essential features everyone, every customer uh, expects. Um, so they will not raise up your satisfaction very much for example when a when a train is um, is on time it's yeah. just something you you're expecting uh, because it's it's the whole heart of this product mm -hmm. but the, the problem is or the the thing is with the basic features if they are missing or if they are um, not functional like the train a train is not on time the customers will be uh, heavily dissatisfied so like you mentioned the train. I'm thinking now also about the internet. Like, yeah, it exactly. should be very hygienic that uh, when you work, when you do the home office, uh, internet is there. And it's also nothing that you should shout about if you are an internet company, that your internet works all the time. It should be delivered. And it doesn't make me super happy if internet is there. Yeah, but it makes me very angry when uh, I have problems with my internet. Exactly, that's that's a very good example. I think everyone uh, everyone already experienced. Um, yeah. Um, furthermore, we can also see like performance features. Um, they have a direct impact on customer satisfaction. Um, and the better these features are, the more satisfied the customer will be. For example, the battery life of a smartphone. Um, I think there's no doubt when a battery can survive more long throughout my day, mm -hmm. there's a direct connection to uh, to satisfaction. Yeah. Once we have some um, a excitement features, it's called, also called delighters. Uh, these are unexpected things that can really greatly increase the customer satisfaction um, when, when we present them, um, but they don't cause really dissatisfaction when when they are missing so not like a basic feature it's something something hidden thing the customer don't even think of and when they when they see it they're like oh wow that that's really nice and um th then this will raise up satisfaction uh, satisfaction now for example like um when you when you purchase something you get an extra extra goodie like a free purchase a free um, accessory when you when you purchase something you will get something extra mm -hmm. um, or uh, extra points etc something like extra things you're not uh, paid for you're not expecting um, uh, this will normally uh, raise the satisfaction high in cost uh, customer yeah. So, and, and I think this delight features, they can really increase the satisfaction over proportionally. Uh, and yeah, of course, the delight features, they will not be so important in the moment of decision making. These are the performance features. For example, when I buy, let's, let's go with the machinery again. If you buy some machine, you will, for example, compare 
um, I don't know, energy efficiency of the machine, the price, the material that is made from. However, if the company also delivers something extra, like you said, something unexpected, maybe some extra trainings for employees or um, maybe the company is also doing some, um, I don't know, sustainability activities, something that will delight uh, customer and will make them feel better, special. I think um, this this can be very powerful. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned the canal model because I think when we are creating the value proposition, it is really important to realize what features, what aspects of our solution, uh, what role they play. And yeah, as mentioned, it's not necessary to shout about hygienic features. We need to de develop them to some satisfactory level. Uh, on the other hand side, with the performance features, it's important to make sure that we are better than competitors. And also we need to ensure that we have some delight features. Um, again, it's again about the differentiators as we said uh, before. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's it's a really good way to see what, what features of our product are um, important to the customers, what we should market about, maybe what's even not, not different at all, but we think it's very different as a company. Maybe we set the focus completely wrong um so it's uh, again it can just have advantages and i think everyone should have a should have a look at uh, at this business um a business model too yeah and there's also one more frameworks uh, that i think it would be worth to discuss and this is a push pull framework uh -huh, yeah and i think when you um introduce or want to introduce a new proposition on the market, it is very important uh, to think about the factors that will um, help or will somehow enable the switch for customers from the current solution to the new solution. But also it is mm -hmm. important to realize what can block the switch because you can have some very good solution, but if customers are not able to switch to your proposition, then of course you cannot be um, successful on the market. And um, in this model, um, as just mentioned, on one hand, we think about the aspects that enable, that support the switch. They can be the aspects connected with the current solution. For example, the problem with the existing solutions, um, the satisfaction with some features of the existing solution. On the other hand side, there are aspects that are connected with your solution. So any benefits of the new solution new that you can bring to the market. Um, on the other hand side, we have the blocks. Um, they can be again connected with the current solution. For example, the current solution is so deeply integrated into the systems, into the production processes. Um, that it is, for example, hard to change or with the banking systems, many companies are um, not willing or they do not often switch the bank providers because they do, uh, they know how um, difficult it is, uh, how um, difficult it is to inform the, all the partners, uh, even us as the customers um, uh, are not uh, willing to very often to switch, for example, to new bank provider. And this consists yeah. really every yeah. kind of product, software, scenery, if it is well integrated in the system. Um, and then we have the um, uh, blocks uh, connected with your current solution. For example, if uh, customers are worried, if your system can be easily integrated, if um, all the features will work smoothly, and I think it's good to be aware of all these aspects so that when you develop your value proposition, you address all the problems and you um, enhance all these pull factors, um, but also in your communication that you inform the clients um, about the, uh, you know, all the positive aspects of, of the product and inform about um, all the features that make the switch 
uh, simply easier. So, um, yeah, I think that's also one uh, important or a useful framework to consider when you create winning value propositions. Exactly. I, I also think it's it's very um, uh, important and um, it's yeah it's it's a good way to 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 see uh yeah what you should push and and, and pull like the, like the name said <laughs> yeah and um i think of course there are other very um useful handy frameworks uh, that can be explored by people making decisions uh, in the business and um we hope that at least these four examples showed how frameworks can support the decision-making process, how they can support the market research, analysis. Um, if any of you is interested to find out more about creating winning value proposition, uh, but also more about uh, using frameworks in business and in research, uh, we invite you to subscribe to our B2B Insights podcast. Uh, we also invite you to visit uh, B2B International Insights Hub at b2binternational.com uh, slash uh, insights. Um, but I think for now, we will finish our discussion, Niklas. Um, thank you very much for accepting the invite. Thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, on your favorite frameworks. Um, and I hope to speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you also, Beata, for inviting me. And if any of uh, our listeners here have a favorite uh, framework, uh, we would be really interested to also hear about them or what do you think is, is a good uh, framework or what you use in a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.